Welcome back to Games Revealed. I'm James Nelson Brink, and we are one. So today, I want to talk about how you can play any PlayStation game in the cloud, on the go, on most of your devices. And the service is called Shadow. Now, I will say, I will start this off with, I'm not necessarily going to use a service like this, at least not right now, as I'm pretty content with my main PC and my Steam Deck and how I have everything set up. But I think it will be useful for some of you other uh, Steam Deckers out there that want to have a little bit more of a portable session on the go. Um, I'll talk about some of the pros and cons to this in the beginning after we get through this next part, which is to like, subscribe, bash that bell with your crowbar. Now <laughs> we can get to it. Yes, I, I'm going to end that quickly and we're going to get into the pros. I think the pros are you have a persistent storage in the cloud where you can have one profile, one Windows, where you can play your games on your main desktop, on your phone, on your MacBook, on your TV, and then you can play it on your Steam Deck. And the thing is, you can switch between all these sessions and should be able to play just fine. Pick up, you know, where you left off on your computer, on the Steam Deck, on the go. That is very attractive. Even to me, except for, I just, that's not, I, I don't mind closing down my, my uh, game and then propping it back up on my Steam Deck and playing it there with the hardware built in. Um, just don't mind that. If I was going to go this route and put it on my Steam Deck, I just get a, um, a controller set up for my phone and play it this that way. As the Steam Deck, I, I, I want to utilize the, you know, the, the specs, the, the central hardware it comes with and work in those realms. That's just how I want to do it for now. Um, it's, it's a great option. Like I said, it has storage built in. You can download your games and everything like that. Um, and it really that consistency and being able to play Windows games on your Steam Deck this way uh, might be the easiest way for you to go. So that is, those are the pros. The cons are you're going to have latency. You're not going to fight past that. Um, you're just always going to have latency. Uh, you're going to have less latency depending on how close you are to their data center and also how good your internet connection is. Those are two things that will help with that. Also, the visual quality will be determined by that connection and two. So latency is a big one with how close you are to the data center. Uh, video quality is, is even more affected by your bandwidth, by your uh, internet connection. So <laughs> with that, uh, the cons don't start stop there. I would definitely say another big con is that you are paying $30 a month for a service that most likely your Steam Deck can do on its own where you don't need to pay for it. Even Windows, you can run without paying it. You can run your games. Also, Fortnite that will not work great in this area. Like I said, it's going to have latency issues. You're going to, with competitive shooters, with competitive games, you're going to want to reduce latency as much as possible. That being said, running it on the Steam Deck, no matter what, isn't like the optimal setting, but you can at least reduce the settings. Let's say if you go into Windows, play Fortnite, you can reduce those settings enough to where, and slap a mouse and keyboard onto it, that you can at least not see too much of an effect over someone else except for the refresh rate of the screen and you're just not going to get past that with either of these options so with, with, with those cons kind of being over so let's actually move on to a little bit more of you know of what this is uh, like i said it's 30 uh, it's 29.99 a month 30 dollars a month uh to have this virtual pc and the tech seems good. I've seen people play stuff on it. It seems decent enough. Like I said, once again, latency and all that. You will also get the option to do a power upgrade this summer, which is another fourteen ninety nine. which is not, it, I don't know. It doesn't seem reasonable to me because we'll look at the specs here in a second. The specs are a little old. Uh, and then also storage. If you want uh, additional storage up to two terabytes, you need to pay two ninety nine um, a month. So the specs are, it comes with a 1080 or an equivalent. I'm sure they have. They run a couple different things, and that does matter. Uh, I, I wish they didn't say or equivalent because drivers. If you're trying to run games, let's say drivers do matter. Uh, different system, uh, different video cards will matter depending on what kind of game you're wanting to play. Um, it matters, not the biggest deal, but it does matter. It also runs an Intel Xeon, which is a server processor. So I'm kind of curious how that will also play with some games. Some games are don't do well on server processors. Um, some games do fine. It also comes with 12 gigs of memory, which is less than your Steam Deck. And then storage-wise, it also comes with 256 gigabyte, which is still not uh, an amazing, amazing amount. And it's not easily upgradable unless you pay money, you know, monthly instead of just paying once with your Steam Deck. 
I'm really trying not to uh, shoot down this option. I think it's not a bad option. It's just um, if you're getting a Steam Deck, why would you go this route unless there's a couple of very specific Windows games you want to play? And those tend to be more competitive or essentially online. And you're going to get a decrease in just, you're going to have latency issues. Now, they have the power upgrade, which has a 3070 or similar, also an AMD CPU. Then it upgrades to 16 gigs of of memory and your storage still stays the same. So probably wanna know how to install this. So let's go to downloads. I will also mention that there are downloads for Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu, Android iOS, uh, Android TV, tvOS, and Oculus Rift. Okay, first up, we're gonna to need to download the app. So over here, we have a couple of different options, right? Let's go with the Ubuntu app image and I'm gonna show you a trick to get this to work and this will actually help you get other app image applications working, which are like Ubuntu apps. Um, a lot of stuff is in the Flatpaks um, Discover app right here, um, but not everything is, So, including Shadow. So if you want to use Shadow, you're going to have to go through these steps to get it to work. Okay, if we go ahead and download, and then we're going to see it's downloading, and it's going to go to your download folder. Um, once that's done, then you should be able to copy and paste or cut and paste with Control-C or Control-X. And then also uh, you could do just right-click cut and then go to home, go to applications. We're going to go ahead and paste that in there. I've already done it. I have it set up. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, it's, usually it's just a good idea to do this extra step is click this to is executable. And then uh, that will make it so that if you just double click it, it'll run right here, fine. Now, this is the most important step. I mean, well, obviously installing the software is important. That's important, but like, the, you're not, I, I could not get this to run properly unless I installed uh, this application called App Image Launcher and I chose the light version according to this uh, resource. Now, once again, these steps are also going to be included in the description below along with resources and this uh, command that we're going to run here in a second will be included there too. So first up, we need to download it and I'll have this download link below and you're going to need to uh, download the light version of the x86-64 um, app image. You're going to go ahead and download that. And then once it's downloaded, then you can go to downloads. This is what I recommend is once again, cutting and pasting it over into the applications area. And this is mine right here. Now I have version 2.2.0. If it's not that version, you're gonna have to do some of this manually, but that's fine. We're, I'll, I'll let you know at that step what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command right here that we're gonna put into the console this little bad boy right here, which you can find um, just by searching your apps down here. Okay, now we're in the home forward slash deck folder. Uh, and we can do LS and we can see, hey, there's an application. So we're gonna do CD application. And then go, at, and now that we're in the applications, we know we have access to that uh, folder we or file we need to install the app image. Um, if you just control V, sometimes after selecting it over here, it will do a weird copy and paste. So uh, let's go ahead and um, control shift V, which will just do a direct copy without any extra um, stuff coming from the website. Now you can see in this that we have the app image launcher. We have Chmod, let's start there. That's gonna change the permissions to executable for app image launcher. And then it's, we have the app image launcher that we're going to also install. So this is changing the permissions and also installing the launcher. And so if we go ahead and hit enter, I have already installed it. So I have a little bit of an error that says, hey, it's already installed, that's fine. You should get a confirmation that, hey, it's installed and then you can continue on. Now, if it gets an error, file not found, something like that, once again, you need to check that uh, version number. In my case, it's 2.2.0 and you're gonna to have to change that in this uh, terminal command to the proper file name. Okay, now that that's done, everything that you drop that's an app image that you drop into this applications folder will now be watched. And the app image launcher will 
indicate, hey, this is a resource that other applications can pick up. This is an, and this is something that can be launched in multiple areas. Um, it's nice. It adds, it adds an extra step that is just kind of annoying in the Steam side of things. So if we go to the Steam client, okay, now we can go and do add a new game, add a non-Steam game, and we should be able to scroll around here until you find it. See, and you can indicate, or you can find that, hey, it's home forward slash deck forward slash applications. Cool, this is Shadow, it has the version number. We select it, hey, add selected. Then if you type into the search into the library, you can see, hey, Shadow's there. And then this should be able to just launch. Um, let's go ahead and just see if it launches. Um, if you've followed all my steps properly, it should just launch. I've done this a few times now and it seems to work. Okay, so now it's launched. Let's go ahead and see if it works in game mode. This is the final step, guys. Let's just uh, move it on over there. Okay, now that we're in game mode, you're gonna see, hey, my, uh, I already have Shadow there, it's because I've done it before, uh, and it just remembers that. But if we go to library, if we go all the way to the right tab, it will have your non-Steam games added there. And you can see Shadow is right there. We're going to go ahead and do Shadow. And then if everything runs again, runs fine, or is set up fine, it should just launch. Now, if you try to just add the app image in without doing the extra tool, the app image launcher, it doesn't launch. At least for me, it doesn't. So also, you're going to see some flashing going on. That's just my recording software. So now you can see we're in the Shadow. So you should be able to use touch screen to get into the inputs and then open the uh, keyboard up with the Steam plus X button, and you should be able to just type in your pa email password, hit login, and it should work. Now, I'm going to preface, like, right now. Like, I'm going to note, I have not gone past this step. I have not signed up for, the, for their service. Um, this was requested for me to do this video and to help. Um, I can get you this far beyond here. If there's any other issues, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything maybe someone else can answer or I can answer. If it gets really bad and no one can get it to work, um, then maybe I will purchase the service and try it further and, and add it to the, to the comments. Um, I've seen other people use the service on their Steam Deck, so I'm just going off assumptions that it just works from here on out. Just, yeah, let me know in the comments. Let me know if this is helpful. If you like this service, if you don't, why are you going to use it? Why are you not going to use it? And with that being said, watch my other videos. And uh, with, with all that said, with everything being said, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Later.